Benvenuti alla cantina. Welcome to the wine cellar. Today we're going to discuss racking. And last week was Valentine's Day week and this week is President's Day week, so happy President's Day. Um, I have two demijohns to rack today. I like to rack one or two demijohns over this two week period. I have two left and they're right here and you can see that they're full to the neck. Um, this demijohn was racked a cup, uh, yesterday and this is how much wine was lost in the racking process so I have to top that up. Uh, air is the number one enemy of wine right now and what racking does um, it clarifies the wine so maybe I rack a little bit more than others um, but I don't like to add anything to my wine unless I have to but I do add a little potassium metabisulfite or meta which uh, preserves it so this is the wine cellar here uh, and it's not to be confused with the room over here where the wine is uh, fermented. Um, on November 11th, which is Veterans Day, and I'm a veteran like some of my friends who helped me, um, we know that all the sugar has converted to alcohol, and we move the wine from this room uh, into the wine cellar where it's significantly colder, there's no heat in here. Um, it's good to have two windows so you can get it nice and cold. And the temperature gets down to about um, 28 degrees. And the cold weather, cold temperatures help all the particles that we want to fall to the bottom do exactly that, fall down. So today is a little bit warm. We're in Massachusetts and you know what the weather is like here. It's always changing. It's about 43 degrees in here. But a few days ago, uh, it was really cold, uh, 28. So that's great. Sometimes the fermentation valve freezes. And whenever that happens, I just remove the potassium metabisulfite water mixture I have in there and replace it. Uh, but the cold weather really helps everything to fall to the bottom. So before going further with this, I'd just like to explain a little bit about the winemaking philosophy I follow. Um, one, I combine everything I learned in the old world with uh, what I've learned in the new world here. Um, as a child, I was lucky enough to go to Italy many times with my parents. I observed my grandmother especially work in the vineyards and then my grandmother and uncles and aunts making wine. I like to keep things simple. There's no need to add anything unless absolutely necessary. Um, I like to include a little bit of Asian philosophy. Uh, do nothing and leave nothing undone. Uh, the most important is preparation. So get everything ready before you start doing anything. And finally, uh, reading is uh, most important. Always read new ways of doing this, learn the chemistry of the grape, and finally record your steps from year to year and uh, look them over. So there's a lot of wine in here as you can see and all most of these demijohns have been racked, a couple each day. Uh, over here in the corner uh, my friend wanted to make some Barolo from Italian must. I usually don't work with must, I much prefer working with grape. Uh, we racked these the other day and the sediment, I must say, is totally different in this must that comes from Italy than the sediment that you're going to see in a little while from the grapes from, from California. So let's walk over and look at the equipment that we need and look at the equipment. You'll need different sized containers, of course, demi, uh, demijohns. Um, then it's good to have a seven gallon carboy like that and a five gallon carboy and a three and uh, no, no, that's a four, I'm sorry. And this one is a three and it's good to have a couple of gallons uh, like that because uh, you're going to lose some volume of wine when you rack. So you have to top up and you might have to pour into smaller containers. 
then you're going to need some racking tubes. Um, so these are called racking canes or sleeves. Um, they, they come, there are shorter ones and longer ones. Um, this one here has um, three parts. There's the racking cane that goes inside a sleeve and then at the bottom of the sleeve there's a little cap to prevent the sediment from coming up into uh, the wine as we rack it. Then there's just a racking cane by itself like this without a sleeve which also has a cap at the bottom and they come also, uh, the shorter one is for the carboy and the longer one is for the demijohn. Um, it's good to have a couple of uh, wedges like this and they serve the purpose of sliding under the demijohn or the carboy so that the wine goes to the far end of the bottle and then we can rack all the wine out and leave the sediment behind. So when you rack red wine, the first rack, you want it to get some air. Exposing it to the air uh, releases any of the off odors that might be with the wine the first time you rack, especially that rotten egg smell. Uh, when you rack the second racking, the third racking, it can't touch the air. So when you rack the, sec the first time, you leave the tube at the very top of the carboy or the demijohn and you let the wine run down the side of the bottle so it aerates. But the second racking, the third racking, you put that tube all the way down to the bottom and you don't let the air touch it. With white wine, when you rack white wine, white wine never aerates. The uh, tube always goes down to the bottom of the receiving bottle. Um, it's February 2020. I like to think of wine right now as a teenager. So teenagers can be easily influenced and what influences wine at this stage is air more than anything else and we want to keep the air away from the wine. When we ferment in this room, we want to check for potential alcohol, total acidity, pH. Um, you know, if we want to really be fussy, we can measure volatile acidity. We can measure the sulfite level when we rack, and then we know exactly how much sulfite to add, to add when we rack it. But I don't measure for volatile acidity, neither do I measure for the sulfite level. Um, What's most important is that when you're, when you're fermenting in the fermentation room, you've got to make sure all the sugar changes to alcohol, and then you can move into the wine cellar where it gets nice and cold. That's the most important thing to do. Let's take a look at what the old timers used when they racked. This is an inclined plank. It's uh, made of wood. And what the old timers did is they got something like this and then they just filled it with pebbles. Now I only put a few pebbles here but they would have put all pebbles in this whole inclined plank and they run the wine, they ran the wine down the plank, the wine hit those pebbles and guess what? The pebbles released a natural sulfite. Um, if the wine you're making has that egg smell, you can rack it over a piece of copper. And there's a chemical reaction with the copper um, that dissipates that eggy smell from the wine. The old timers, well, my dad, I got these funnels from my dad, and this, both of these are made of copper, and one of them has a built-in sieve, and then they, they serve the same purpose. They help get rid of all those smells. So the other, and this is what my dad used to rack. You see this old-fashioned thin tube here that he used? You put one end in the bottle and the other end in a receiving bottle, and it's really small. And I know my dad didn't read all the books I've read, um, but actually, the smaller the tube, the better. Air is the number one enemy, and when the tube is that small, no air can get in there. As the tubes get wider, and thicker like this, like these two, when we rack, you want to make sure that the tube is totally full of wine. If you see any air bubbles in there, you have to move the tube until it's totally full uh, with wine. So other equipment you need during this process is a couple of funnels. There's a big funnel for a demijohn and a smaller funnel for the carboy. It's good to have a collection box. If your friends stop by 
and they want to drink some of the wine, you know, we can't, it's illegal to sell the wine, but there's nothing wrong with accepting a donation. And um, these wines usually cost me between $3.25 and $4 a bottle, and it's always nice to get some of the money that we spent on the grapes back. Other equipment we'll need at this time, uh, here are some brushes to clean the carboys. You have to keep the carboys impeccably clean. So if you just keep them clean all the time, you're in good, you're in good condition. Then this is potassium metabisulfite, and the dose is um, one gram per five gallons of wine, and this is about a gram, an espresso spoon, not even half full. Get one of those, dissolve it in a little glass like that, mix it with some warm water so it dissolves really well, and then add it. Uh, if it's a five gallon container, that's all you need. If it's a 14 gallon carboy, well, two of those and a little bit more is also all you need. I usually rack every three months because as I said, I don't like to add anything to the wine. Uh, you should have a couple of glasses ready in case your friends stop by and they want to drink a little bit. And it's good to have um, a, wine a wine tasting glass like this. Uh, the top is very narrow. You pour a little bit of wine in there, you swirl it, and you can smell uh, anything. Uh, you smell better, and if you can smell that hydrogen sulfide, that egg smell, um, it should dissipate very quickly. Um, if it doesn't, then you might want to consider racking it over copper. Uh, but hopefully that's not necessary if we were good to this wine when it was a child. This is what the sediment looks like. Um, it, after it's been in a cold wine cellar, it should be like salt. And most of the um, ingredients here are acids, tannins, pigments, spent yeast cells, and bacteria. All of these particles have a negative charge. So if we want to, we can add something like bentonite, egg whites, cow's blood, but I'm not going to add any of those things. Uh, all of these ingredients have a positive charge. They go to the bottom of the demijohn or the carboy, and because they have a positive charge, they attract all those particles that might be in suspension that have a negative charge. Um, so I don't like to add anything unless I have to, so I prefer to rack a couple of times, get my wines nice and clarified so that I don't have to add anything. Um, I'll let the sediment dry out about a week or so, then I'll pulverize them, crush them up, and put them in these bottles like this, which I like to give to people as uh, gifts. If you want to, at this stage, you can add some oak chips. Uh, that's totally up to you. Um, you can get all different kinds. Um, here are a couple of wine books that I recommend. Uh, my favorite is by Philip Wagner. It was written in 1994. It's called Grapes into Wine, but for me, I think it's a classic. This one's not bad, From Wines to Vines. It's written by Jeff Cox, uh, even though he claims that um, the grapes that are shipped east from California, uh, it's impossible to make a good wine with them. I, I disagree with him. I understand what he's talking about. You know, these grapes are picked in California um, when they're in good condition. Then they're stuffed into boxes, then they're put in a truck, and by the time we get them, they've been refrigerated for a week or more. Uh, refrigeration lowers the total acidity and increases the pH. Um, so my wines, I like to drink them when they're young, when they're fruity, and they're dry. So I don't age them for a long uh, amount of time. Then you should have a notebook, have your friends, when they come over and taste, they can take notes. Um, you can record everything. Uh, the tube is doing its job. It's fully full of wine. There's no air in there. It's uh, going down into the receiving demijohn. Um, the, this demijohn is tilted forward with a wedge. All the wine now is towards the far end of the demijohn and the racking cane 
is dropped down into the far end of the bottle so we get all the wine out and we leave that sediment behind. So I don't add wood chips at this time. Well, if these wines are healthy, um, and I judge that by taste and, and um, acidity and so on, I, then I put them in um, oak barrels that I have and that's when I add oak chips because these barrels now are pretty old so they don't give much flavor to the wine but they do round them out and they do smoothen them out and I add some oak chips to give them some of that uh, oak flavor. This is how much sediment came out of those two demijohns that we just racked. Um, I'll just leave it there for a couple days let any juice in there run down to the bottom and drain it off. So three rinses and the demijohn should come out nice and clean like this. If anything is stuck to the sides, get rid of it with a brush. You can use a container like this, fill it with water. That should be enough, three times. And then your final rinse should be with a mixture of potassium, metabisul uh, so, uh, potassium metabisulfite and water. You need um, six level, level uh, tablespoons of a meta and one gallon of water um, and that will be a good final rinse. And if you do that and you clean all the time, you're good. Sterilization, cleanliness is the most important part of making wine. Tip your demijohn upside down in your sink. Let the water run out for a few, um, about five or 10 minutes. And then Put your demijohn into its um, plastic container and make sure the container is as clean as the demijohn. First rinse with uh, cold water so you don't dissolve any of those um, crystallized sediment and then you can um, catch it with the drainer in your sink and put it into a container and let it dry out. Now, demijohns look like this after you've racked them. Um, the particles that you see clinging to the sides are usually um, acids and then at the bottom are the other particles. So rinse these as soon as possible. Um, the, the cane and tube are going to look like this. They're pretty clean. The tube, oh, actually all of them, eventually will yellow over time or pick up some of the reddish colors, pigments from when you rack. So when that happens, just uh, don't try to clean, don't try to put anything in there to clean them like bleach or anything. Just get rid of them and buy new ones. So to conclude today's activities, first, get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to rack these last two carboys. I move them out of the wine cellar into the fermentation room put them on this table because this table is higher than the table in the wine cellar and I want gravity on my side. The old timers racked either on the day of the full moon or a couple of days after the full moon to take advantage of the gravitational pull which draws all the sediments to the bottom makes it easier for us to rack. So all of the teenagers in the wine cellar now have been wrapped, sulfited, and full to the top. And they should be okay. But we cannot forget that they are teenagers and subject to influence. Influence from the air and influence from temperature changes. After all, they're teenagers. So fortunately, we have some adults in this room who will be able to look after them. But we have to check in on them every day. If there's a drastic temperature change, which is subject to happen here in Massachusetts, one day can be 24 degrees, the next day can be 50, the level of the wine in the carboy might come up into the neck and into the fermentation valve. So there's no reason to be alarmed. We just take the fermentation valve off, clean it off, rack a little bit of wine off, get it back to about an inch or an inch and a half below the level of the fermentation lock, and we're all set. Thanks for your help. The next video is going to be making red wine vinegar, but not with the mother that you can buy in a store, 
But with a mother, that comes when someone gives you a bottle of homemade vinegar.